Hello again, everybody. Zegatech is here with my WWE World Review for tonight, Monday, January 8th, 2018, from Memphis, Tennessee, FedEx Forum. Been there before. Probably, probably, probably said a couple times every time I was in Memphis that I've been to FedEx Forum before about five years ago when the Eagles were in town. I had to go see them there because I had a gig. I had to give up an Eagles ticket because of. The gig, I couldn't see Eagles, so I had to see him in Memphis, traveled. And it was a fun show. And then what was there next week, so I was going to lie winning. So, there you go. Then, and before I get to my overall thoughts on tonight's wall, going up against the college football championship, uh, I want to comment a little bit about Western Kingdom 12. I still don't make a proper attack sports anymore. Just make proper review videos. Comment a little bit about WK12. I don't have AB and JPW World. I only have the network because I have too many subscriptions for my DJ service and all that to get another subscription service to wrestling besides the network. But I do have access to TV, so I watch the three hour special, including the three big title matches and Cody and Ibushi. That was a decent match. That crossroads Cody did up the apron to Ibushi. I don't think I've seen him do that. And it was amazing. Killer Scary! Crossroads. Jericho Omega lived up to expectations. See that match. I don't care if you have to find a link to it. We'll get the Japan World. We'll watch it from Access. Watch Omega Jericho. It lived up to the hype. Heel Jericho was the most vicious here. I've seen him. I think because he's in a non TV PG environment, it helped him thrive in this. Pissing everybody off in Japan, making them eat off of his hand. Including putting Red Shoes, Referee, and his son in the walls. Bloody match, long match, great match. Sad night of loss to Okada in the IWGP title match. But it's time will come. Great main event for that. Currently, see the rest of Wrestle Kingdom during the next couple of weeks on Access TV. That's how I get my New Japan fix. But now with Wall, a couple weeks away from the Wumble and Wall's 25th anniversary. Wall need a decent wall to compete against the college championship after a hot week of college football last Monday with the Rose Bowl, an exciting Rose Bowl game with Georgia squeaking, squeaking by OSU and kind of an okay game with Alabama. The college championship game going up against Wall. Wall need a good. And it was a decent little water day. That's awesome. And a monster laying out a beast. And a machine. And the ending that should have been last week's ending. Speaking of should have been last week, we had a match that should have been last week. But because of somebody got sick, it didn't happen. And the build up for Wumble and Wall 25 continues. Now let's get going with our first segment with Roman. Starting off the show, fresh off his town defense against Samoa Joe last week. I think Joe should have been champion. But with an impending title match with a certain A-lister, maybe we, that's why we didn't see Joe win last week. But anyway, Joe should be champion. He had a great promo last week. Good match against Roman, but Roman stood tall despite this DQ step against him. But he overcome the, overcame that, and he stood tall to begin while saying that so, well, Joe, I did this match for my brother, Dean Ambrose, who you injured. Because Ambrose got hurt. He got taken out. He made Miss Mania, made Miss SummerSlam the same nine months. But they always say that. Let me just give you a long time between people's returning to set up an early return. So, as one was talking about, you take out one member of the Shield, you piss us all off. And then all of a sudden, Jason Jones music hits. And Jordan feels that, hey, I'm a partner now. I'm the champion partner with Seth Rollins. I'm a shield guy, right? We all, God, his delivery is kind of funny. You know, it made me laugh, this segment, with the way Jordan was interacting with Reigns and Rollins when Rollins came out later on. Talking about, like, Jordan being all cocky and you know, say like, we're the most dominant force in WWE. You're not, Jordan. You're not in the shield, buddy. You're not even close to the shield material. I like you at all. You're, you're a bad American alpha. You're trying to make the best out of this situation, making lemons out of lemonade with this situation. But 
You're not even close to the level of Rollins and Wayne's. No way, Jose. What happened to him? I haven't seen him like that in NXT. Did he get released? No way, Jose. If you think I don't have to buy the club, the, the Balor Club. Gallows and Anderson and Finn Balor thank God it's not a uh, one-off like we saw last week. I'm happy they're teaming them together on a full-time basis. It's going to do both their careers wonders. They've both been floundering around recently. Especially Balor and since he came back from injury this past spring after WrestleMania. And goes Gallows and Anderson. We all know their misadventures in the company. Now they're together. They were doing wonders. So they were talking about they have, they have some respect for Wands and Wayne's, but they don't respect for that nerd Jason Jordan, the daddy's boy. Got a lot of daddy's boy chant from this Memphis crowd. Way fucking better than Miami. Well, it's because it was at the New it's not New Year's Day. So I think we all complained. I heard a lot, saw a lot of people complain about the Miami crowd last week. So I wasn't the only one. It's all the people's thoughts. Every creator came out saying that. We're giving ourselves a six-man tag tonight. Happy, because there was a lot of rumors flying on the internet about Sheamus against Seth Rollins for the one millionth, a billionth, gazillionth, dot trillionth time. I'm happy that match never happened. I was, I had a whole thing ready for it. I was waiting to say, this is the fear that never ends, but we will get a club Rollins and Jordan rematch at the Wumble. That was made tonight. So we will get a rematch. But tonight will be the club taking on Rollins and Rose's friend Reigns and Jordan. What would have happened if Ambrose would have stayed healthy? It would have been a full on shield against the club. Damn you, wrestling gods! Damn you, wrestling gods! We should have had Rollins, Ambrose, and Reigns against the, against the club, but instead it's two studs and a dud. And I saw one comment on Facebook say, Rollins and Reigns. And fucking Jason Jen. <laughs> One of these things doesn't belong. <laughs> so now on to our next occasion, our first matchup. Being Absolutions, Mandy Wells and Sonya Deville with her hair all down, not tied up in an MMA style. Here do. Take it on Sasha Banks and Bailey. With Mickey James at their corner, and Paige, who is still not medically cleared from getting hurt recently at a house show at Wingside. Maybe they're just making sure she stays healthy enough for the Rumble. You know, since all three members of Absolution will be in the women's Rumble. So maybe that's why they're keeping Paige off in the ring. Mandy Rose did most of the work in this match. And she looked pretty good in there. In this match. You know, taking out Bailey a little bit. Bailey gave us some. And then Sawyer got the hot tag in. Got some big moves on both women. There was some shenanigans. If I would page a little bit. But not much. You know, not much for Paige. But we see like a double team move at one point. Where his back was turned. And Mandy and Sonya got a double team. I think it was on Bailey, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bill got distracted the referee. Wells gave him a big flying knee to the face of Sasha. There's some distraction there. So then, uh... And then near towards the ending, it came down to Manny Wells and Sasha Banks. But then Bailey and uh, Sonya got it on a little bit. They fell over the top rope a bit. Manny got caught into the bank statement and tapped out with the first major losses for Absolution, I think. But anyway, that's the day Absolution lost. This is a little tag match. We've seen a combination of these women together. You know what I mean? And it's getting a little bit old, you know. We've seen like various tag matches and six women matches involving these six women. Kind of like we're getting tired of seeing the bar in any combination of Wilds and Ambrose, or in this case, recently, Wilds and Jordan. Well, the revival. I know they're probably not hiring them for big opportunities because they got hurt a lot, but dang it, they're the revival. Maybe they're thinking like Cody Rhodes, after the revival. Fuck the revival. <laughs> In a decent little match. So, uh, there you go. So now on to our next matchup being the defeated 0-151 Kurt Hawkins trying to delete his, his losing streak 
but his fate was already sealed when he heard the new theme music in the in ring, proper in ring debut of a certain Wookiee one. That his fate was that he was going to fade away and classify himself as obsolete. Obsolete! Against Woken Matt Hardy. Uh, get a little pop here. Better than in Miami. You know, you got, you got the piano thing, but then add more to it. Than just the piano thing. It, it works with the character. The music works. You got the laugh. Oh! Ah, ah, yes! Yes! I do a good Matt Hardy, don't I? Anyway. Uh, what can you say? Woken Matt got some big moves on. Hawkins and got the victory. Which was the fate. So uh, there you go. Impressive little proper in ring debut for the character Walking Matt. They got interrupted by Bray Wyatt. And they had a stare down in the ring. And they had a laughing contest at each other's faces. So uh, there you go. Um Villa's been okay. The match would be decent. But we should have had more from the Walking universe, not just exposed on the laugh. You know, that's why a lot of, I've seen a lot of people comment about not Having like Vanguard One or We Beat Webby. I think she tweeted about something about doing a singing part and no senior bench or anybody else from the Woken Universe. Broken Universe. So, some people don't get it. People that don't understand Broken, broken Man. It had a little bit of belt because all it took from to get broken was a loss to Bray Wyatt. So, what the heck? We'll take as it is. On to next same fair being the return of the Miz in Miz TV. But before the Miz came out, we were serenaded by Elias. I love the the is WWE meeting we walk when Elias is getting over. The uh Prayla Gita and sang a song about Memphis about being Timely that WWE was in Memphis on Elvis's birthday. Very timely. Talk about Graceland. Say, but we don't really care. Like treating like teddy bears and mentioning Elvis' song titles, which are fine over people's heads because only young kids know like Joe House Rock and a few others, not Teddy Bear. I wanna be put up on your teddy bear. I grew up around Elvis. My grandmother's a big Elvis freak, so I know a lot more Elvis than most people do. I want to be your teddy bear. That's all like that reference. <laughs> Saying that we don't even care. And then, of course, he introduced The Miz with The Miz to watch and tell. Miz has been gone off television shooting The Miz's latest film, The Marine 7. Marine 6, whatever number it is now. And there's as many Marines as there are Transformer movies. Yay! But the difference is, Miz's movies are made in the video. So, Miss up being back, and Miss Two Odds was trying to shower him and get, trying to outdo the other. A little comedy stick here with the Bowen Axel was kind of funny. So, then Miss is like, I have a lot going on in 2018. My wife and I are expecting our first child. We have to have a reality show. Yep. There's a new unscripted Miss show on USA Network. Miss and Mrs. coming out later this year. For six episode one, they're testing it out probably. Give you six episodes and seeing if it gets ratings. Hey, people watch Total Divas, they're gonna watch this show too. And Total Bellas. It'd be better than that Total Bella bullshit. <laughs> the parody the Miz did last year. And uh, I read the press release. Uh, it's produced by the same production company that did The Wheel World. Makes sense, because as many people in the know, know that Mike Mizanin, the Miz, came from The Wheel World. Who tough enough and you know the rest of the Miz story to be named Rolling Stone Wrestler of the Year. That was awesome. That is a true thing. But Miz is like, I'm focused more than ever to get back my Intercontinental Championship. Now, a lot of people would like to see him as a Universal Champion because he's one of the top heels in the company right now. He's had a hell of a heel one for the last year and a half. He's always been a good heel. But I think since Maurice came back, it brought a new fire in him, especially that fiery. Now, infamous talking smack promo two years back. His great one is IC Champion. Last two years, you know, he's had a couple of reigns with it the last two years. And have a great 
time with it. And as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, the reason why I think we did not see a Joe victory is because last week, because Miz gets his obligatory rematch at Wall 25 in New York. Will it be at Barclays or will it be at Manhattan Center? Because they're going to do Wall 25 from two venues in New York in two weeks. And they announced some of the superstars, some of the legends that will be at Wall 25. Uh, they got uh, Dudley Boys. That's a lot of interesting because, as you know, Bully, many people know. Some people don't. Bully Ray was in Ring of Honor. I don't know if his contract ended after he lost at Final Battle last month. So if that's the case, we'll see a full Dudley Boy thing. Uh, also advertised New Orange Outlaws. I'm glad they settled their bullshit with Billy Gunn. Billy Gunn got fired about a year and a half ago because of some drug stuff. I met him at the Indies last year. Uh, actually, yeah, two uh, two years ago at XICW, my indie company I go to. Nice guy. Um, then you got APA advertised, JR and King advertised, uh, Hall and Nash. Cool, gonna be at a convention in Michigan in a couple weeks at StarmaCon. Uh, a lot of other people advertise, but the big ones advertise Undertaker. We will leave maybe setting up a match with John Cena. Or maybe someone else is setting up a match against John Cena at Mania. I'll get to that in a minute. And yes, appearing Stone Cold Steve Austin. He wasn't on Wall 1000 or I think Wall 20th. So I'm happy he will be part of Wall 25. Will the walk appear? I bet you he will. It'll probably be via satellite. <laughs> but I think walk should appear. I don't care if it's via satellite. Just have walk show up at all. I would like to see him live, but I would love to see him in person, not via satellite. So uh, there you go. On to our next matchup. The match that was supposed to be last week. But thanks to the Cruiserweight Champion being sick, and really sick, not cold for getting drunk on New Year's Eve, the match never happened last week. Instead, Seth Alexander teamed up with Goldust, and they had a little segment before this match with Seth and Enzo for the Cruiserweight title, with Goldust continuing his movie thing, trying to be like the coach from Waku, quoting lines from it to Cedric. That's a little funny segment there. So Goldust continues to Cruiserweight, even though he doesn't fit the limit. The, the weight limit. See if they play off that more. But now, on to the match itself. Uh, good match until the ending. Kind of got messed up. Uh, Will fucked up ending to the matchup. Now, I was watching backstage. I thought she might get involved. Or Drew Gulak. We didn't see Drew Gulak at all. Or any member of the Soul Train. That was a good positive. Uh, match was decent. Seth took care of the match. You know, because he's very athletic. He deserves a lot more. You have some great high flying moves. Enzo took some cheap ways to get back in the game. Uh, Selick was going to the top rope for something, and then Enzo just tossed him off with ease and then took advantage for the majority of the matchup. And then Cedric gets some big moves, more big moves out of him, including a big kick. That apparently blooded Enzo. I didn't see it because I was flipping back and forth between this and the college football playoff game. So apparently Enzo got bloodied up. And they got taken off to the outside, and Enzo got. A big aerial attack from Cedric fly over the top with a nasty splash. And Enzo landed gingerly on his ankle. We don't know if it's a fake injury or a real injury. But Payne's injury caused Enzo to get counted out. So Enzo is still the Cruiserweight champion. I thought he was going to lose it tonight. So Cedric with either Nia screwing him over by accident or Drew Gulak. We've seen a little bit of tension build with them. But we didn't see any of that. We did see a little Nia. Enzo interaction. I think we would have loved to have seen Enzo and Nia team up in the mixed tag challenge, but since Enzo got sick, even though he's better now, they just don't want to spread it. Potentially. So, Apollo Cruz is in. As uh, Nia's partner in the mixed tag challenge. So, these are match. Cruz win title. Said they get all the carry. Enzo's not as athletic as most of the Cruz guys. But sadly, the countdown finish. Kind of a screwy finish there. Hopefully Cedric gets a title one day. But till then, Enzo still champion by the break, by the tip of his ankle. So now, on with our next affair, being the barn. Fresh off getting their tag team title rematch. Set for the Wumble. They thought they were going to get it last week, but they're going to get the Wumble. Taking on, 
I just worldwide seen him a lot more on TV as of late with the new statistician being uh, Dana Brooke. We saw Apollo lose to uh, 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 Bray Wyatt last week, and he's the tag partner of Nia Jax at the Mixed Tag Challenge. Uh, got some interesting teams for that. Uh, Alicia Fox and Goldust. The ones I'm interested in from Wall is Oscar and the Miz, and the team that many people, including myself, are calling Beauty and the Beast, Wall Women's Champion Bliss and Braun Strowman. Uh, Charlotte and Bobby Wood, Glorious Flair. I like that pairing. Makes sense. And the two main couples of SmackDown are together Lana and Rusev, and Jimmy Uso and Naomi. Uh, SmackDown people have not been assigned yet. Have been Becky Lynch, Carmella, Natalia, Sami Zayn, Nakamura, and a member of the New Day, which will be voted on by the fans. And speaking of that, fans will vote Bailey's partner. Uh, voting is on right now for that. It ends at, ends at noon on Tuesday. It will be Bailey get, with Jordan, Elias, or Samoa Joe. I think Elias, Samoa Joe. Just to see how Bailey would fit with those two. But it's kind of interesting Apollo is in this because. He has no momentum right now. You know, he just lost the brain, and now he's taking on the club. I think people like me, when we saw this match set up, you know, club against the bar. I keep saying the club sometimes. The bar against Titus Worldwide, I was like, easy win for the bar. Easy win. You know, they got some momentum, need some momentum. For the tag team title match in the Rumble, so it's like, they can't afford to lose. And they look good early on. You know, it looked like an easy squash victory for the bar as they dominated. The early heavens matchup, but then Apollo Crews with his agility got the big ups before tagging in his partner Titus for the hot tag. Some big moves. But then the ending game, when uh, Sheamus was trying to broke it, Crews off the apron. But with that distraction and Apollo being taken down, Moon Sony off the top rope, on the apron, onto Cesaro. Sheamus got distracted from that little curmudgeon with Apollo and Cesaro. Got caught in a roll up by Titus and one, two. What the hell? Titus Worldwide won? I was stunned now when I saw that. I think no one saw that. People were expecting a ball victory. But nope. We got Titus Worldwide winning. I don't know if it's going to lead to anything. Maybe he just want Apollo to look like he's a winner to be in the mixed tag challenge. Because he's uh, uh, Nia's partner by force of Enzo being out. So, uh, there you go. With that scenario. So, that's why he gets a surprise win. Short term, at least he gets some, some air time and a big upset win. And, like I said, some momentum for Apollo to make him look. Credible in the mixed tag challenge with Naya. In a long one, I don't think it's going to lead to anything, but hey. Some people crash the decision, especially if the ball got the rubber match. Look at the momentum back next week. Anywho, uh, with the segment of the night, now this should have been the ending of Wall last week. Kind of Wall that ended flat with the last night game, Wall. You know, the only good part was Lester setting up from the choke slam. That was a funny little thing. I know people like to do that, but that was kind of funny when he did it. You know, I mean, no Strowman in that brawl, so it kind of fell flat. But this was a segment that should have ended last week. Uh, we did have the Opera Control with Paul Heyman Provo with Lesnar coming out. Uh, Lesnar's two for two for wall appearances in 2018. Who did see that coming? So Lesnar, Epic was once again laying down the fact that we have two challengers. And the scenario has been, it's not about. Lesnar, I mean, Danny is not about it's it's not about the it's not about the challengers and all. It's about will Lesnar survive? How can Lesnar survive this? The storyline Heyman said it's not about how can Lesnar and how and will Lesnar survive. Question should be who will Lesnar pin? Will he pin Kane? Will he pin Strowman? Or will he pin them both? So I've a little promo there from Heyman. They walk into the back. The bam for mine. Kane came up from the. Back and act less off the stage and then brawled all the way in the back with a better brawl than last week. And then Strowman showed up. Yes! We didn't see him at all, like I said, in that brawl last week. But we saw him tonight taking out both Kane and Lesnar, nailing him with uh, little, uh, 
stage cases and putting them on top of him. So Paul was looking around, and all of a sudden he grabbed this is like the weirdest. Like we always we've seen this blood destruction shit in the last year and a half with the ambulances. This one the most silly one, the coolest one. He got a hold of a fucking grappling hook. How can he do that? How can that happen? He grabbed the hook, tossed it out to this lighting truss that was above the prone bodies of last day and Kane. Pulled that sucker down, and BAM! It collapsed on top. It was an awesome segment, just in that much. That's, that structure landed on top of Lesnar and Kane, if that really happened, maybe the angles. But, great segment. There's, like I said, this should have been in the wall last week as Strowman destroyed and almost basically killed Lesnar and Kane with the trust on top of him. That was an awesome segment. Lesnar actually walked into an ambulance or got stretched into an ambulance. Was I not the only one that wished that when Lesnar was stretched out in that ambulance that we were going to see Braun Strowman say, I'm not finished with you! I like his moment. Phew. I think we were all wishing that. <laughs> But we didn't see a woman ambulance appearance. They already did that with him and woman, so they don't want to copy that. Because that was priceless last year. That whole thing with him and woman in the ambulance. So they don't want to copy it and make it on copy and copy. It came when I was on power, but Leslie got taken out to the ambulance. Underneath the fair. Small Joe. Taking out you Slater. His friend Wino. Now, they show a little bit of history, you know, I know it's, you know, it looks like an easy one for Joe, but hey, why not? As history and Joe, they were both a TNA. And hey, if he saw one upset tonight with the ball losing the tires for wide, can we get another upset? Gladly no. Despite one of those best efforts to turn back the hands of time, and he did put on a good effort against Joe, but... The inevitable happened that we thought was going to be the boss match against Titus One White. The white person got over. Being some more Joe. Playing out. Why not with the Coquita Clutch in the victory for him. Brushing off his loss against Roman Reigns last week. Basically he said, Roman got lucky last week. It was a... It was a uh, little bit of a victory because... You didn't really win, woman. You you still kind of lost. Despite the fact you walked out with the belt, I still beat your ass last week. So since I'm not getting an IC title match anytime soon, with the Miz getting a shot at Wall 25, ending any woman Joe thoughts at the Wumble, especially with Joe announcing he'll be in the Wumble match. And the announcer, Charlie, and once they were young, they probably purposely had Charlie interview Joe so he won't mention Renee's real life again. Like he did last week, in the last couple weeks, with his vicious, savage promos against Renee. But her marriage with Dean Ambrose. Talking about the other superstars, Charlie did. When she mentioned John Cena, he was like, ah, John Cena. Dave, I want to hear. It's been going for so long. I think they came from the same OVW class or something. I don't know the whole story. But he'd be the first one I eliminate, Joe says. Is this a teaser for Joe's media match against John Cena? Now, there is a little rumbling about Cena and Tinker at WrestleMania. The match that should have happened two years ago when Cena was still a full-timer. And when Tinker was still healthy. Somewhat healthy. But, apparently they're going to probably set it up in Wall 25. But I would love to see Cena against some more Joe. We're actually... Was supposed to see that feud last September, but Joe got hurt, hence the Woman Cena match at No Mercy that we got instead. So, uh, there you go. We'll see if that's gonna do a Joe Cena thing, but we may see Joe and Cena collide in the Wumble. We don't know if it's gonna lead to Wumble, a Mania match, so there you go. I love to see Joe and Cena. And Cena gets Joe over, damn it. I'd rather see that than have Cena beat Tucker. Anywho, on our next scheduled affair, that's the keyword is scheduled. Oscar was ready to take on Nia Jax. The fight for the honor of a best friend 
Alexa Bliss after losing to Oscar last week in a non-title match. Basically giving away a match that should be for the title. We may get that match sooner than later for the title. Not at Mania. Maybe at the Wumble. Or after the Wumble. Maybe at World 25. Anywho. Uh, as Oscar was getting ready to face up against Nia Jax, Nia came from behind, laid Oscar out with an electric chair, and then did a rolling senton onto her, and the match never happened. Uh, they did make a match, another match, for next week with these two, stemming from this attack. So, there's that. On with your main event match, a six man tag. It's the Ballot Club. Finn Balor, Gallows, and Anderson taking on. These not so shield woman and Wayne's his friend Wallace and the odd man out, the unwanted child, basically Jason Jonah. Uh, this match was decent, good match here. Club looked dominant, actually, woman for most of the matchup. Uh, Jordan didn't get a lot of shots in, they was gonna hot jag in. Came in the house of fire with his big moves, you know, Falcon Arrow, Sling Blade, all that jazz. And I was looking at this match, and I'm like, the Battle Club should get over here. You know what I mean? They won last week in the match against the Mr. Watson and Elias, and it's not a one off thing. I'm happy. And they should get an opportunity for the tag titles after this whole ball thing with the mini shield finally comes to an end of the Wumble. So, the club should get the win, and Pompey Jordan's going to eat the pit. You know, because he's the one with the least amount to lose. You know, he won last week in his one-on-one -on -one match against Cesaro. Woman can afford a pin. Nor can well. So, hey, they can sacrifice Jordan. Little that I know. There's a little bit of tension with, you know, Wallens and Reigns. And more importantly with them and Jordan being the odd man in. You know, being forced to be Wallens' partner. Now the Jackie champion trying to get along. But a little bit of tension. And that led towards the ending of this match. So, uh, Wallens was in there, getting his butt whipped by the club after coming in with, like I said, the hot tag with uh, Friends of Fury. Uh, he was trying to tag in Roman Reigns. But unfortunately, Jason Jonah got in the referee's face, caused the referee to get distracted, and not see Roman get the tag. And that led towards a domino effect. First, with referee distracted for both Woman and Jordan, leaving Wallens prone to a magic killer. On the Wallens. And then Waynes and Anderson and Gallows fall on the outside, with Anderson and Gallows getting taken out by a spear and a super punch from Woman. And then, uh, as Waynes took out Gallows and Anderson, Bow was still in the ring at that point. And Wallace had just ate a magic killer. And Jordan tossed his partner back into the ring. And unknowingly tossed his partner into a corner drop kick by Finn Balor to set up the coup de gras. And the 1 2 3 victory with Wallace eating the pin. Wow. I thought, like I said, that we're going to see Jordan eat the pin. Wow. Wallace ate the pin. And it was a domino effect with Jason Jordan inadvertently. Causing them the match with Jordan distracting the referee, not seeing Woman's tag, and then inadvertently tossing Rollins in to basically lose the match. So there's a lot of anger going on. You know what I mean? Rollins and Reigns got into the face of Jordan after the match, very upset that Jordan caused the match, but then all of a sudden, as if it couldn't get any worse for these three, they just lost the match. Thanks to the inadvertent help from Jordan. Here comes Miz and Mr. Watts out of the crowd. Beating up on everybody. Leaving Rollins and Jordan prone as they focus their energies on Roman Reigns. As they got into the ring, started a beat down on Reigns. As Mr. Watts members lifted up Roman. Set him up to get the skull crushing finale for Miz. But Miz wasn't done yet. Crowd's chanting one more time. So instead of doing another Skull Crushing Finale, we thought it was going to be another Skull Crushing Finale, but instead, the Mr. Watch, Bo and Axel, lifted up Roman to deliver a triple powerbomb, shield style, on Roman. That's how we end war with Miz standing tall over a prone 
Roman Reigns. Good main event and a great ending. Better ending than last week. You know, it wasn't a flat ending. It was a good ending. Man standing tall and battle club winning. So, there you go. Uh, entertaining wall tonight. Matches were decent. Some screwy endings there, especially with the no country with Oscar and Nia Jax, and obviously the screwy ending of the Cruiserweight title match. I hope that injury may be a way to wipe off Enzo to get stripped of the title without getting pinned. I don't know how they're going to do that. But because we need a new champion, of course we do. Uh, the last segment was a lot better than last week's, especially that whole thing with Strowman. That was amazing. It's probably one of the best Strowman segments I've seen lately. You know, his shit with Kane's been kind of lackluster. But what he did tonight with the Lightning Trust, with the grappling hook, that was kind of cartoony, but it was still, it still works. It's fucking Strowman. And I know we all want him to win at the Wumble so badly, but they may still want to have a Reigns Lesnar too. So, they want to make Wumble look strong. Sadly. So, there's that. Maybe they can change the plans. They, they changed their plans before at me year 30 because of the fans. But there's no backup plan. There's no money to bank briefcase to be cashed in on from anybody to save this mania again. So, see how everything turns out for mania. Head towards the Rumble, 125. Year just started. See how everything all turns out in the end. So, that is it for my whole review. Thank you so much for watching. With that in mind, you've all been attacked. Bye, the review. I'm Zach. See ya. Bye-bye.